within him. It's messy, chaotic. It's expressing the complexity of love and in a way it brings Arthur to life. You've seen it. Is it everything you expected? <laughs> How about another joke, Murray? No, I think we've had enough of your jokes. What do you get? I don't think so. When you cross I think a mentally ill loner with a it. society that abandons him and treats him like trash! Call the police, I'll man. tell you what you get! Call the police! You get what you fucking deserve! No, what the heck, I'll laugh anyway. <laughs>Um, what is going on? What just happened here? What did I actually know? What did we just watch? Why did we just watch the downfall of a franchise in live time and blatant character assassinations of one of the best, if not the best comic book villain the game has ever seen? Sure, there's always going to be some differences in each and every adaptation of the character from the creator's own interpretation, vision, and path in regards to the story that they want to tell. And from what I could tell, I don't think anybody had a problem with the interpretation, vision, and path that Todd Phillips had laid before our feet and blessed our eyeballs with when making one of the highest grossing, audience pleasing, critically acclaimed comic book movies of the past decade in Joker 2019. But I think that is the core problem that we as an audience and mostly Todd Phillips has run into because the way that I see it or the way that I saw this movie after the two and a half hour invasive experience on my imagination is that Todd Phillips was not interested in a sequel. And I'm not quite sure if he either one hates us the audience for making his Joker movie such a massive success, the studio for wanting to capitalize on that massive success, or himself for even creating that massive success in the first place. Because Joker 2, and I'm not going to say those French words, seems like a movie that was created with the mindset of all of the above. A movie that not only seems to hate the character that it was adapting, but just the whole notion or idea of having to create a sequel for a grateful audience and studio in the first place. And the worst part is that it seems like Lady Gaga was the only person on the planet that was able to ease the pain of such an annoying task. And so when you look at it from Todd Phillips' point of view, what do you do when your heart's not in the game and you don't want to supply to a demand anymore? You fold. You overcorrect. You character assassinate literally and figuratively, to ensure the death of this franchise. And that's exactly how it felt watching this movie, a gigantic fuck you to a studio that more than likely forced his hand in regards to making a sequel. But again, just like with most messy and toxic infighting, the audience is who suffers the most and receives the biggest fuck you of everyone involved. And while I'm just an average bloke, therefore I do not see these movies a week in advance, and in addition to being the chronically online type, much like Thanos, Spoilers and reviews are inevitable. And while admittedly I have to say that I was extremely shocked before watching and scanning through Twitter at Letterboxd that the majority of the audience was not into this movie, and it didn't seem as if it was just like a disappointment, but in a way, actually insulted from what they were asked to ingest, and even worse, what was wasted in regard to their money, time, and active brain cells. But what was even more shocking was the active score from the critics, and how the same shitty taste that seemed to be left in the general audience's mouth was shared and damn near mirrored by the critics that seemingly are never on the same page as the audience, with rare occasions such as the recent Borderlands movie, Megaflopolis, and in a way I'm predicting the Minecraft movie will go next year. I'm really going all in on that. I'm just saying, you rarely see a time where everyone across the audience spectrum is on the same page and opinion of the shit on a screen that they're birdboxing themselves into watching. But in a time where I would say is easily the most baloney but still divisive Hollywood era that we have ever been in with the most fractured audience to studio relationship in quite some time, there are just some movies or pieces of entertainment that combine the two opposing forces against the crime against creativity that stands in their way at that particular moment. And after watching some reviews, courageously purchasing my ticket, and sat down for a movie that couldn't even give me the benefit of the doubt of having a cool-ass popcorn bucket to ease the pain of headassery that I was about to witness on my screen. As I mentioned before, it's safe to say that Joker 2, and I'm still not saying that French name, fits the description of said shit on a screen. A movie that had no interest in taking the character of Joker, the narrative that was laid out beforehand, and the audience seriously. 
And because of that, we have one of the most disappointing movies, not only this year or in the 2020s, but simply one of the most disappointing and creatively egregious comic book movies of all time. And the worst part is, is that Todd Phillips and, well, maybe Warner Brothers is just somewhere out there not giving a fuck. And while this movie will surely be out of sight and out of mind by the end of October, let's go ahead and talk about a plot with a transition from a much better Joker movie. And here we go. Joker 2 follows the events and the murders from the first Joker movie as Arthur now stands in a public trial for his crimes, with the defense having Arthur claim insanity on a case of Joker being a separate personality of Arthur, manifested by his family and societal abuse over the full stretch of his life. You watch as the movie attempts to take you on a deep dive into Arthur's psyche and flushes out the inner workings of his mind as Joker cleverly paves a destructive path out of his predicament. And while I wish I could just stop the plot synopsis right there because my god I think we would have a pretty solid movie on our hands, as I mentioned before, I think that went against Todd Phillips' intentions. And because Todd Phillips probably went to a Lady Gaga concert a couple years ago, and again, because this is just a big fuck you to a studio who more than likely just forced his hand, we also have Harley Quinn by name only thrown into the mix, with her forming a stalker, trauma-like bond with Arthur, built on the fantasy of the image of Joker in the first movie. A solid Harley Quinn take, in my opinion. And since Joker 2, Foley a doo doesn't really have any semblance of a plot, any real direction on how they want to structure their narrative, pacing that rivals the excitement of your average soccer mom's target runs, and yes, musical numbers and sequences that come so frequently that you kind of start to get exhausted by Lady Gaga's voice, which, well, take that statement for what you will. Hi, let's build it. We're just going to stick with the core of the meat, and that's really all I have to work with. I wouldn't really recommend you go watch this movie, but if you want more than that, well. And while I'm dog-pooing all over this movie, much like my nickname of it suggests, I should iterate that there are some good qualities in there that had a touch of greatness from Todd Phillips. The cinematography was still fantastic, the character writing wasn't too bad until we absolutely shit the bed in the last act, the musical score was dreary when it needed to be, and the musical numbers weren't bad at all, just frequent, a little too frequent not only for my liking, but for the majority of the audience members. But even with all of that being said, even though there are some good qualities to the movie that you would think wouldn't make it an all-time stinker like I'm about to suggest, but in my opinion, there are truly times where a certain aspect of a movie or piece of entertainment is so utterly shit, disappointing, and disrespectful to the audience that it creates an everlasting downfall of a franchise that envelops and drags to the sunken place all that came before. We have seen this done before when we all witnessed the downfall right before our very eyes with Game of Thrones, and while the comparison between the two couldn't be more different in almost every single way, character assassination and nonsensical endings seem to be what the two have in common, and there is really no quicker path to franchise annihilation. Why don't we just go ask Disney Star Wars and see how that division of their entertainment business has been going? It's unfortunate because it feels like the audience has been punished for enjoying Todd Phillips' good product all the way back in 2019, and it's truly a situation where it felt like, no matter what, we the audience were basically in a lose-lose situation behind closed doors, and that we the audience, no matter what, were in for one of the biggest disappointments of our 2024 Hollywood filler arc. <sighs> Man, that just sucks to say. So in a ranking tier list that is still a name in progress, I mean, what am I to do? For a movie that I am only going to enjoy less and less with time and the more that I think about it, and for a movie where the effort was literally nowhere to be seen, man, it's unlucky and whatever, it just is what it is. This will more than likely be the shock of the year when it comes to the nameless tears, but Joker 2 is shit on a screen. Man. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description just in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did enjoy. Why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.